Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's 2019. I love saying that. Happy New Year. What an exciting time for all of us. Right here, right now, January 1st, 2019. And I kind of have this thing for um, liking looking at calendars and seeing the one. You know, it's like whatever the month is. And it just, hey, Andrea, Happy New Year, darling. It, um, when it says one, I don't know, there's something that's really, really exciting about that. And this is it. I mean, hey, Edward and Fernando, check you guys out. Happy New Year. How exciting is this? I absolutely am thrilled to be able to do the Deborah Peters show on January 1st. It's my regular recording time. For those of you that would like to continue to follow me and be part of my, my tribe and, and learn some of the tools that I have that I use in my business coaching practice around the world, um, this is where you're going to get that information because I, I bring out a lot. I don't hold back. I like to, I'm a giver, so I like to give as much as I can to you guys, to all of you. And hopefully what you'll do is you'll take what you learn here into your own life, into your own business, into your families, into your friendships. You know, when you're talking with someone and, and they're challenged, you'll be able to draw upon this toolbox. So let me just say hi to some more people. So Michael, great to have you. And Jose, thank you for sharing my video. I really appreciate it. Um, Frank is here. Jimmy's here. Happy New Year. <laughs> um, Byron, Lynn, nice to see you again. Kimberly, I saw that it's like 35 below zero. And by the way, you guys, that's is that Celsius, Kimberly? I, I'm not sure. You have to you have to give me the 411 on that. So Kimberly's in um, I guess a kind of northern Saskatchewan, Canada. And it's not unusual for it to be 35 or 40 below. So God bless you, girl. <laughs> Just, you know, keep the scarf around your face if you go outside and don't breathe it in or it'll, it'll freeze your lungs, right? So, hey, Jason and Arav and Maurice. So great to have you guys. Oh, it is Celsius. Okay. And Frederick. So happy new year. Wow, I've got a ton of stuff I want to share with you guys today. I've been, I've been making notes. And um, I actually went out for a bike ride to kind of like get myself prepped for the class. And um, there's something about being outdoors for me. I, I guess it's that um, sort of that farm girl in me. You know, I grew up on a farm and I spent pretty much all day, every day outdoors. Um, hey Braxton, it's so great to connect with you. I think Braxton plays football for, is it the LAPD Centurions? I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I used to spend pretty much every day, all day long outdoors. And you guys have heard me talk about this before. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks Frederick. My, my pleasure to have you join us today. So when I'm inside too much, I find that my creativity kind of drops. And so yesterday I, I did about a three mile um, hike. And um, so yeah, it is the Centurion. So well, you have to let us know when the season kicks up. I know your coach and I'd love to come out and support you guys and, and, and bring some people and create a new fan base. I just, I love it. Um, so I did that today. I just I jumped on my bicycle and I went for a spin for about an hour and and you know on the way back I had to go up this big hill and I'm like wow you know um, this is really helping me with the creativity because as I was taking my spin past this one building it had this big sign that said the time is now and I'm like wow. Um, it is, right? It's the 1st of January. And I'd really like us all to make the absolute most of this day. So it's the first month, 
it's the first day of a brand new year. I mean, how does it get better than this? Here we are sitting right at the starting gate of a brand new life. And we can create and turn that into whatever we would like it to be. Because at the end of the day, it's whatever you put your focus on that is gonna show up in your life. Hey Morris, happy new year. Um, now, I have to see how to pronounce this, so forgive me if I butcher your name. Salin, Salina Tori, Salina Tori, is that right? Um, happy new year. So yeah, here we are, it's January 1st, a brand new year. Now, there's a few things that I wanna share with you around, it's just really my point of view. Hey Kiko, so you, you can, anything I have to say, you can take it or leave it, it's totally up to you. If it resonates with you, use it. If it doesn't resonate with you, lose it. You know, whatever works for you. I, I, if it pushes your buttons and it, it, it kind of gets you a little bit revved up and, and um, you know, maybe, maybe look at that. Look at that, because the way I see things in this world, my, my point of view is if somebody does something and I have a flat line on it, then I don't, I don't have any issue around that to work on. If somebody does something and it pushes my buttons, then that's an opportunity for me to work on me. Because I really am a big proponent of state management. I think when you can manage your state, regardless of what is going on around you, then that's when you really step into being a peak performer. So I'm, I don't get involved in any of these Facebook political conversations and any of those shenanigans. I leave that to everybody else because the way I see that is my time is super precious. And the reason it's so precious is because it's devoted to me creating my greatest life ever. And what else is possible, right? So in this show today, there's a few things I wanna cover off with you. And I wanna just kinda of lay them out as bullets and then I'll circle back and go back through them. It'll give you guys an opportunity if you have any questions, you could just pop it into the chat. I will do my absolute best to address whatever those questions are. So um, first and foremost, today I wanna to talk about intention, the power of intention. I don't believe in resolutions. I've never believed in resolutions. I used to own a gym and I used to train professional athletes, and I know how the mind is created and how it fires and how we create behavioral change and resolutions are not it. So if someone has told you to make your resolutions, I'm gonna ask you to rethink it, and I'm gonna share with you today about the power of intention. And to kind of give you a sense of timing, hey John, um, we'll probably, this will probably be about another 45 minutes just to kind of give you some sense of timing. The days are getting longer, thank goodness. We're back returning to the light, so to speak. So um, before I was really having a hard time with this because I was running out of light and I don't have a professional lighting system set up for this yet, but, um, but we'll get that, right? We'll, we'll get that, that's coming, I promise you. Um, so we're going to talk about intention and how to work with uh, creating intentions that actually produce results for you. Hi Randall and Ted and Tony and Tim Hill. Hey Tim, um, where are you on the planet anyway and what's the temperature? I'm curious because Kimberly Roblin is on here from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. It's like minus 35. We're also going to talk about um, you know, t taking time at this time of the year to work on get coming to awareness of what it is that you want to, hey, thanks Braxton, have a great day. Um, and this uh, recording, by the way, I'm going to put up on my YouTube channel. So you can find me, I'll just put it in the chat, on YouTube at, um, at Neuroengineering Institute. So it'd be really great if you guys could go over there and, and subscribe. Um, 
So um, where was I? So taking time to design this year for yourself. I've been working on, I've, I've been feeling like 2019 for me started at like the beginning of November. And that's kind of the experience that I've been having. So I've been working on my 2019 plan, um, which is very dynamic, by the way. It's not linear. So I've been working on that plan since the beginning of November. And it's still not done because as I've been going through the process of working on this plan, um, my awareness has shifted in a really huge way. My um, sensitivity to energy has escalated tremendously. And um, my clarity around who I am has really come super, super clear. So I have um, not completed all of what I want 90, 2019 to be, but I have the big brush strokes. And so here's the thing around um, making a plan for your next year. Um, actually, I'm going to pause that for a minute. I'm going to tell you the other uh, highlights that I'm going to cover off today, and I'll come back to that. So remind me if I say, where was I? <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about creating. I'm going to talk about contribution. And I'm going to talk about um, being committed to your self-mastery and the, the fundamentals of consistency that are necessary for that. Um, and I'm gonna talk about satisfaction. So those are the highlights. Hey, Julie Ward. So great to party with you Saturday night, darling. Hi, Nastic, nice to have you. All right, so does anybody remember? Where was I? Anybody remember? <laughs> I'm joking, I remember. Um, so uh, setting up your plan for 2019. And um, when you create these broad brush strokes of what it is that you would like to actualize, um, it, it unfolds in a, in a slower fashion. Now I find that this is really useful as you build up your um, capacity for managing your what you're actualizing or what you're creating in your life. Hi, Stacy. Um, because it's like this. It's like if you are just learning to drive a car um, or ride a bike and someone put you into a car with six or 700 horsepower and a stick shift, you'd probably crash. Or if you're just learning to buy, ride a bike and somebody puts you on, I don't know, um, a super fast racing bike, you would probably crash and burn. And this is how it works when you're building your, your ability to take energy, which is what we're talking about, your ability to take energy, which is a thought, an emotion, an awareness, and actually convert it into physical experience, into tangible results, into actualization. Hi, Bino and Naser. Nice to see you guys. Happy New Year. Um, so having these broad brush stroke goals um, is keeps the momentum a little slower so you can manage the process more effectively and what that means is if you start to get doubtful for example like let's say you are on the path of creating your goals through your intentions now intention is not the doing part it's the commitment inside of you, um, which I'll talk about in a second. So, so if you're in the process of creating some goals for yourself for the year and you have gotten 
very specific on what you want those goals to be. The speed of how how that's going to show up for you will will ramp up. It's like kicking it up a couple gears, right? So the problem with that is if you don't have the self mastery to stay out of fear, to stay out of doubt, to be committed to the outcome, regardless of what your circumstances look like around you, then you will really quickly turn that goal into a problem. You will really quickly manifest the negativity as opposed to actually manifesting the goal. So initially, when you're when you're playing with, um, con- you know, it's, it's in the old days they called it alchemy. So when you're learning to take energy and convert it into tangible, physical results that you can touch, feel, taste, move around, drive, you know, live with, sleep with, you know, have as a client. When you're going through this process, you want it to be in a slower rate. So you want the 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 languaging of the goals to be in a in a more ambiguous languaging. And then as you get comfortable with the ownership of that, and what that means is not going into fear, not going into doubt, not not going, you know, why hasn't it happened yet? Or if, or if something seemingly negative seems to happen, not giving up, right? If you can keep yourself out of that hole, then you have more control over the process of the alchemy, of the actualization. And as you master that, then you can start to be more specific about your goals and you can take that up, the speed of that up a notch because you you know that you're not going to go into doubt. You know that you're not going to go into fear. Hi, Kathy. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. and that's really the key. So when it comes to intentions, it really is, is an experience. It's not just something you say to yourself, like it's really an experience. It's, um, it's a relationship that you have with yourself. And as you, as you have that relationship with yourself, then you go into this place in your heart and that's where you connect to the intention that you're you're creating this year for yourself, and it, it it's really um, it's a really deep kind of experience. Really, it's not. Look, I'm I'm not. If you're someone that um, is very linear and logical and um, scientific in a way that you have to see some kind of study on things or some kind of evidence procedure and you have to know how it's worked for other people, then you probably don't want to be on my show. You probably don't want to be watching me because I'm not that. I'm not that. I'm all about the art and the evidence procedure is yours. You know, it's really funny when I have uh, someone say to me, well, what kind of results do people get? And my question is, what kind of results would you like? Because you will get the result that you come in expecting. I deliver the tools. The tools work every single time. The question is, are you willing to take responsibility for that? And most, okay, I'm gonna delete that. Some people are not willing to take responsibility for that. Hi, Charlene. Happy New Year, darling. So it's, um, it all starts there. It all starts there. I've had so many people in my life over the last 20 some years that have been mentors and coaches. And if, if I were to have ever asked someone, um, you know, what kind of results do your clients get? Are you any good? If I felt that I had to ask that question, I would not have worked with them because that would have been my inner being saying to me, this is not the person for you. 
And look, you guys, you all know, you all know the answer. When you walk into any situation, you know the answer. You already know the outcome because you set it up, you see. Whether you attract that person, whether it's like a relationship and it's a person that you attract into your life, or whether it's a business deal, you already know how it's gonna go. Because you created the experience. The experience isn't just this thing that's happening to you. It's the thing that you have created through you based on your current programming, patterning, and conditioning. So, um, hi Sheldon, happy new year. Um, the, the experience that you're having is something that you created based on your programming, your conditioning, and your patterning. And wherever you are in your programming, conditioning, and patterning is because of yesterday, and the day before, and the day before, and the day before. Your present is a product of the past. And that's a powerful thing to know. If you can get your head around that, if you can get your heart around that, if you can come to terms with that, then there's nothing that you're a victim of. There's no one that can take anything from you. And there's no one or nothing that can block you. Because what that really is saying is that you can you can right now in this moment, right now in this moment, during, during while I'm talking, you can decide what you want your future to look like. And then you can focus on it. You can use your mind to create it energetically. And you can connect to that energy in your heart. And then you can draw that energy through you Oh yeah, that was something else I wanted to cover off with you guys today. You can, let me, let me make a note, because otherwise I might forget. Um, so you can draw that energy through you and, and watch it literally turn into a tangible experience in your life, whether it's money or love or fitness or you name it, you know, where do you want to go? Hi, Michael Bowen. Oh my gosh. I love you. I had so much fun hanging out with you last night. Thanks for the, the soiree and happy new year. So um, let me just bring that up for a second since we're on this conversation about pulling. What I have so much energy going on. It's like channeling it all one time. It's like, I feel like I'm going to explode. So, um, we are, as people, pretty much ingrained in this societal norm that if we want something, we have to work for it. We have to work, work, work. And then we have to go out and get it. So while we're working and while we're going out to get it, what happens? We run into other people that are working for it and going out to get it. And now it creates this competitive kind of belief system in us. So now we're starting to compete. Not only are we competing against ourselves because we think we have to go out and get it, like it exists somewhere out there in the unknown world and we have to figure out where it is. And then when we get there, we have to fight our way to the altar to hopefully have it given to us. And what a miserable existence that is. Because it's not like that at all. That's what the status quo would have you buy into because it keeps you on that treadmill of never having enough, never being um, one with yourself and always feeling at a disadvantage. And then never being one with yourself you never allow the answers and the guidance to come through. Um, feeling alone 
is probably the worst because then all kinds of limitations start to show up because then the self-talk, I mean, it just becomes this black hole that creates and, and, and shows up as unhappiness. So it's really about pulling. It's not about pushing. It's about pulling. It's about pulling energy to you and through you. And it's about you being the energy that is doing the pulling through you. So that there's always this alignment of oneness within you that no one can take away. And I think for me, that's what 2018 was my gift. My gift in 2018 for me was to really get to know me and who I am and what I'm about and what my worth is. So, it, you know, it just, it just creates this, I don't even know if there's a word, I might have to make up a new word. So the whole part about pushing and pulling so if you've been to a store, walk into a store, and there's somebody like, they're on you. You know, hi, how are you? What can I get for you? What are you looking for today? They're basically trying to find out how much money you're gonna spend. And they have absolutely zero interest in you. And so it's like, that's a pushing, like they're pushing onto you, like bye, 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 bye. Um, which is a turn off, you know? So really what we want to do is we want to learn how to pull energy. And in doing so, what ends up happening is we, we, we align with the entire universe or multiverse, whatever you want to term that as. I think it's a multiverse. Um, and you want to create energetically uh, what you want to be in 2019. And then you want to just create this ball in front of you, this imaginary energy ball in front of you. And you want to put everything into that ball that you are being, not doing, being in 2019. And then you want to pull through the universe, through all of the molecules of the multiverse, through all of the molecules of you, and everything that's in your energy ball, because that energy ball is the multiverse. You're pulling the multiverse through the multiverse through you and back, circling it back around. And it creates this oneness with all that is. When you put yourself into a space of oneness that all that is, of all that is, then there's nothing to push. There's nothing to grind out. There's nothing to go out and compete for. It just, hi Dion Joseph, it just puts you in a completely different reality than most people. And I feel like this is the biggest secret that's ever been kept hidden from the masses. Hi David, happy new year. Um, so I, I hope everybody, I hope everybody understands what I'm saying about the difference between pushing and pulling. Because what happens is when you're pushing, you never really know for sure if you're on your path, right? You're just pushing to get yours. It's it's like you've subscribed to this idea that there's a limited pie. And you have to push your way through to get your slice of the pie. And if you don't, your ego thinks it's going to die. And there's nothing more unfulfilling than pushing through your life. It just, it's why people get ill. It's why people get ill. It's why people get old. It's why people are unhappy. It's why people are in miserable marriages. It's, a, it's the disconnectedness, if you will. But when you learn how to pull energy toward you and through you, 
then you literally merge. You literally merge with your creator. And we're all co-creating all the time. I, you, all of us are co-creating. You're, you're the physical portal. And then when you ask for what it is that you want and your inner being, source, spirit, God, whatever you want to language that as, feels that from you, then it begins, it's malleable and it begins to, to formulate, to, to give that to you because in the giving that to you, through you, it becomes more and then we all benefit, particularly when it comes from a place of love, especially when it comes from a place of love. Hi, Oscar, happy new year. Um, so that's the difference between pushing and pulling. And so with that said, um, and we started off talking about your intentions for 2019. With that said, I'd like you to just take some time this week and do a review of what it is that you contribute just for being you. Not for what it is that you contribute because of what you do for a living, not because of what it is you contribute because you're a parent or a wife or a husband or a brother or a sister or a mother or a father, not because of any of that, not because of good deeds, not because you say nice things to nice people, not because you think nice thoughts, like it's not about doing. The idea of acknowledging the contribution that you make to this planet just for being you is what I'm talking about. And I had this epiphany yesterday. So I was out for a nature walk um, and there was this one point where I saw this really magnificent tree. I mean, I just fell in love with this tree. It was phenomenal. It grew in all these funky directions and it wasn't like there was it wasn't anything obvious that caused it to shift and grow the opposite way and create this funky shape to its trunk. Um, and it just made me aware just by observing this tree and how cool it looked that it was really not making any effort to look cool. It was just being a tree. And I thought about that and I'm, I'm thinking, well, what about all of us? like all the humans on the planet for just being ourselves. You know, the tree wasn't like jumping up and down going, look at me, look at me. I've been such a nice tree today. I've created enough oxygen for four to six people. Um, I deserve some kind of acknowledgement. <laughs> you know, I'm such a good tree. You know, it wasn't any of that headspace that as human beings we have going on. So what if you were to just sit down with a pad of paper and a pen and you were to start writing out the contribution that you make to this planet just for being you? Because this planet could not exist in this vibration of itself, of its current self, if you weren't here. If you were gone, the vibration would be different. It's like when you have a team, the team could live on and the team could potentially replace you, but it would not be the same. It would definitely be different. And there's nothing you can do to argue that point. So if you weren't on the planet, this planet would be different, hands down. And you can't argue that. Energetically, this would be a different place, a different space it would have a different vibration. And I really believe that the best way for all of you, for all of us to start off this year is to sit down and like literally acknowledge that. I don't know if any of you have ever done that. I mean, I'm just teaching it to myself this last few months. 
And it's made a massive difference for me. Because I used to have this really low self-esteem and I had to teach myself to love myself in an environment where no one knew how. So it was, I was the, I was the odd man out. And the more I embraced that concept, the more odd man out I was. And that's okay with me. So at some point, you have to be okay with being on your own. You know, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. So being alone is all one. Being lonely is being codependent. Like you gotta be with somebody to be okay. And that never works out, <laughs> not very well. Um, hi, Wayne and Ricardo. Happy New Year, you guys. Thanks for joining me. I hope your health is doing well, Wayne. It's nice to see you here. And hi, Janine. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. So um, my next thing I wanted to talk about, um, pa going past this contribution point, is to look at who you're being from a contribution perspective, not what you're doing with your life or how many people you help or definitely not about sacrifice or martyr or any of that, but just literally like get in touch with how amazing you are and what a contribution to this planet, this multiverse you are just because you're you. And then make a list around that and, and look at then what you're creating with that, right? Because you're creating all the time. Creating is not a doing. It's not a behavior. Um, sorry, my phone's ringing. Um, creating is not a behavior. It's, it's an energy. Because everything's in energetic form before it becomes physical form. The clothes you're wearing, the computers we're on, our phones, you know, everything is energy before it's physical format. And you can create everything and anything with that knowledge. So what I'd like you to do is connect the dots between who you are being and the contribution that that makes to this multiverse, and then the creation of that into the experiences that you would like to actualize for yourself in 2019. And what makes that different from any goal setting workshop, so I'm totally giving you away my secret sauce here, um, what makes that totally different from any goal setting workshop is it comes from a place of joy and love. Whereas goal setting is this linear, step-by-step, -step, logical mind, grind it out, okay, now we have to have an action plan, and if we don't know how, then we get stuck. And if you've been watching my shows and following me, you know that as soon as you start asking the question, how are we gonna do this, that you create a block, right? It's because you, it's really not even a question. How is really a conclusion. When you say the word how, you're concluding that there's something you don't know. When in actuality, you couldn't even come up with the idea unless you already knew how to get there. Like it's inherent within you. you know, a lot of people think that they ask a question to get an answer but it's really the other way around. The question that you ask always has the answer inherent within it, always. So it's about asking more questions, you see. Stop telling yourself or others what can't be or what is. Like just stop talking about stuff like it's written in flipping stone, you know, like it's been chiseled into the side of the, side of the mountain and now it isn't going anywhere because it's just not true. That's, that's Newtonian physics that was based in the manipulation of matter. And we all know how that turned out, right? We're past that. We don't function that way anymore. 
So just in case you didn't get the memo, we're into a whole new paradigm now. And that paradigm comes from creating. And so you create it energetically before it ever shows up in your real world. And when you take the time to meditate every day and do an energy pull on a daily basis, then you're actually pulling that energy to you and you're creating it in energetic um, form before it shows up in your physical reality. And now you're basically in charge of your life and you're not a victim anymore. And when you're not a victim anymore and you can, you're solvent and you can totally stand on your own, you become this freedom light to the rest of the world. Absolutely. People can tell when they're around people that are solvent. You can just feel it. You know that that person is never going to try to suck your energy and lean on you because they can stand on their own. And being around that kind of a pillar, that's empowering. Because if they can do it, so can you. You know, social proof is such a big deal still. There's like a small segment of society that makes it up from energy. And then there's the rest of society that has to see it done first. You know, remember Roger Bannister back in the day, first guy to run the four minute mile and everybody gave him a hard time about it and said, you know, it's ridiculous, can't be done. You'll blow your body up. Like they just had all of these points of view that were based in limitation. And he went out and he did it. And then within a couple of weeks, there was dozens of people that were doing it because they saw him do it. But there was only one that said, I'm going to do it regardless of what you people say. So be the Roger Bannister for the planet. Be the Roger Bannister in your life. Like do shit because it's inherent in the cells of your body not because you're watching other people do it. Like, please, if there's anything that you do for yourself this year is that you actually step into the truth of who you are and you create from that space of who you are being and the contribution that you are to this planet, to this solar system, to the galaxies, to the universe, to the freaking multiverse, and you just stand in your truth and you be that. Even if you're scared, especially if you're scared, do not leave this planet holding back your greatness because I think that it's my point of view, but I think if you do, you're going to be very disappointed when you kick the bucket. Very disappointed when you kick the bucket. The way I live my life is a life of no regrets. I never want to regret something that I thought I wanted to do and I didn't let myself do it. So that's just how I live my life. And I think you guys probably live your life that way too or you wouldn't be on this show today. So, um, fundamentals. Fundamentals. Um, so there's a fine line between where consistency is really a benefit and where consistency turns you into a sheep. So here's the fine line. All, these are, the, these are the, the, my top six fundamentals, and my new book is coming out Q1. I've been consumed with writing, and um, it's been uh, cathartic, honestly. So for those of you that, for those of you that have written a book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Hi, David Perez. Happy New Year. Um, so here's what I'm experiencing. Where's my microphone? There it is. Here's what I'm experiencing in, um, cause I, I was asked by the publisher. I finally picked a publisher a few months ago and 
I was asked by the publisher to build out the book chapters more with more detail because I had hit all these broad brush strokes because I have a lot to say. And um, so I've been going back through and I've been taking the points and I've been building them out, which means basically going deeply into the subject and really um, like building out each subject and, and it's adding pages and pages and I've been writing and writing and writing. Um, and in the process of doing that, it's been very cathartic because everything I'm writing about is something I've experienced in my life. You know, I've been a business coach for 20 years and I've traveled all over the world and I've done some really um, intense projects. Some I can't talk about, some you all know about because it's on my bio and my page and on my LinkedIn and whatnot. Um, and so I, I, when I'm writing about it, I'm reliving it. And there was some, there was some, ex, you know, just like even coaching people that were struggling, like just that sounds simple, but you know, when I'm working with teams of people in companies and, and you, you know, it all looks good on the outside where they have the title and the salary and the expense account, but then there's something else going on inside that human being. And when I'm coaching the company and the team, I'm getting all of that too, that I'm working through with them. And, you know, it touches my heart. Like it's, these are deep experiences I have with these people as I'm helping them transform their reality. And so as I'm writing about it, I'm reliving it. And I've probably gone through several boxes of tissue. I started buying the lotion kind. <laughs> Cause it's like, I just, I just cry the whole time. It's like, I was getting up in the morning and I was writing, um, you know, between five 30 and seven, seven or so. And then I go work out and then I get ready to go to work. I just got so into it that I just, I couldn't even work. So I'm like, okay, this model is not working, but, um, but within that, you know, the fundamentals of, of what I'd like you to have consistent in your life, at least 80% consistent, and then the rest, it's cool, right? Um, you can be flexible in all the rest. And it's all coming out in my new book, and, and I'll have a book launch in uh, London on International Women's Day, which is the 8th of March, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and we're working on the marketing plan. So I don't have a date for the um, Los Angeles book launch yet. We've got a new website coming out and there'll be a space where you can um, sign up and get special invitations to cocktail events I'm doing, um, book launch, book signings, like you'll get on the inside VIP list for those things. I do know that coming up in um, May, I'm doing a book launch in Canada, which I'm very excited about. Uh, and I'll, I'll just keep you guys informed. So before I wrap this up, because we're getting close to the end, um, if you have any questions, definitely pop it in now and I'll, I'll do my best to answer it for you before we close off the show. And um, I wanted to share with you that I have two courses happening. So starting mid-January is my next Shift, Change, and Heal Your Money Story online course. If any of you are challenged with money, then you really want to take this course. And um, one of my students is on here that just wrapped it up. Oh, there she is, Kimberly Rob Roblin. She says, yes, 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 bring the book in May. So Kimberly's coming um, to Alberta for my book launch in May. And, um, and she just, she's an alumni now of the Shift, Change, Heal Your Money story. So the next course begins mid-January. It's nine modules. And if you think this was an interesting show, wait till you go through those nine modules with me. I select just under 10 people. I hand select all of the students for my courses. I don't have, I don't have anybody on my team doing that. I want to know who's in the course. I want to talk with you. 
it's a consultation, it's a discovery call, I get to know you, make sure it's a fit, and um, literally, like, your income changes in whatever fashion you want it to. If you want a double, triple, 10 exit, that's your call, because it's your mind. I give you the tools to create it, and then you decide on what you want the outcomes to be. It's not my call to decide what your outcome should be. Um, and then late February is the Business Accelerator Boot Camp. Same scenario, less than 10 people. I do a discovery call with everyone. I have you fill out my assessment to make sure you're a fit, and then we do that in person. So um, even though the, the Shift Change for Your Money Story course is online, I teach it live just like this, and then I have the recordings available so you have the tool forever. And then the boot camp is, is live at our corporate offices in Los Angeles. So I'd love to have you join us. I've got a couple seats left in each one. And um, I'm sure that Kimberly would be happy if you want to connect with her on Facebook to give you her thoughts on that. So thank you, Kimberly. I really appreciate it. So, okay, here we go. Wrapping up. So the fundamentals. All right, everything beyond this, you don't have to be crazy with. But these are the things that you really need to keep consistent in your life. And I'm losing light, so let me see. How's that? That's crazy, too. Okay. That's better. Okay. So here's the things you really need to be consistent with by at least 80%, maybe 90 And then that other 10 to 20% is wiggle room. All right? So number one, number one, number one, number one, number one is your mindset. Really, please, seriously, treat this like it's the biggest gift from God that you've ever been given in all of eternity, and that is your mindset. Learn how to master your thoughts so that the fear and the doubt don't play games with you, because none of it's true. None of it's true. Whatever you're afraid of, whatever you doubt, whatever you think you can't achieve, it's just all a lie. And it's like an implant. It's like an implant or an explant. And it can hold you hostage. It can hold you hostage for decades, having you believe that you can't be whatever it is energetically that you are guided by source to be. Um, secondly, is your nutrition. Dial that down. There's just no excuse anymore to not have your nutrition dialed because it's everywhere. The information's everywhere. You know, I, when I owned my gym, it was hard to find, but now it's everywhere. And um, what I find works really well is just, you know, intermittent fasting combined with a really super duper high quality smoothie once a day and tons of vegetables and water soluble food and water, of course. Um, exercise, kill it, just kill it, like every day, just like get in there and just push yourself, and push yourself for a long period of time, like an hour. You know, I don't care what all these people are saying about you only need 15 minutes or 20 minutes to study this, study that, whatever. Get in there, spend some time with yourself, Make eye contact in the mirror. Learn to connect with your body. Observe your body in a loving way. Talk to your cells when you're exercising. Thank them for regenerating, because the body has the ability to completely regenerate itself. It's just our belief system that blocks us from knowing that, right? Because ill health, ill health of any kind, is just a separation from your inner being. It's when I did my NLP master trainer program, it took me about eight years of investing in spending, you know, tons of money. Just like every time I would go to a course, it was 10 grand. And sometimes I was flying to different countries just to get the highest level of training. And the thing that I learned the most is that when there's an illness, and I've done lots of parts integrations with like literally thousands of people, 
whenever you integrate the conscious mind and the unconscious mind and the super conscious mind, any health challenges completely disappear. Why is that? Because we have a blueprint for perfect health that exists in the cellular structure, the molecular structure of our entire being. That's why. And if you're not in complete homeostasis, then you've got some kind of separation with yourself at a very core being level that can totally be repatterned. So it's all right. So the reason exercise is so critical, in my opinion, is because it gives you time each day to learn to talk to your body and then to listen to what it tells you. And I'm not talking about just being stiff and sore from exercise. I'm talking about asking your organs, your systems, your, your skeletal system, like talk to your body and ask it to tell you what it needs. What does it need to eat? What does it need to think? Who does it need to hang out with? How much time does it need in nature, which is my next point, to spend time outside each day, no matter what the weather is. And when you're out there, be thankful. Be thankful. Be appreciative. Thank the powers that be for loving you, caring for you, taking care of you, guiding you, showing you the way, and just be in that state of joy and appreciation. Um, sleep. Oh my gosh. Sleep is my best friend. I love my sleep. So sleep, give yourself time to sleep and just enjoy, just like love it. Just go to bed and go, oh my gosh, I get to go to sleep right? Um, and then last but not least is alone time, especially for you guys that are uh, coupled and living with people or have roommates or sharing space with people. Make sure every day that you get alone time because you're your own best friend and you're really the feedback that you need, not somebody else. Okay. So, Thank you for joining me. Happy, happy new year. And make sure that you connect with me for the next Shift Change Heal Your Money Story online course. And if you have a business, you're launching a business, you're scaling a business, the Business Accelerator Bootcamp is February 22nd and 23rd in London, excuse me, Los Angeles. And then I'm off to London to do my book launch. So thank you. Many blessings. If there's anything I can do to be of service to you, please feel to reach out and um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's under Neuroengineering Institute. You can watch the replay of this. And would you just share it with your tribe? I would really love to just get millions of people on here on a consistent basis and create this fantastic ripple effect out into the entire multiverse. All right, guys. Love you. Happy New Year. Take care. And I'll see you on Friday at 4 o'clock. Bye.